Hello and welcome to South County Spotlight on Frontier Community Access Television. Election day in Conway is May 12th. Today we have another candidate running for selectman. His name is Bob Armstrong. And in interest of full public disclosure, Bob is also the president of the FCAT Board of Directors. So Bob, <laughs> it's good to have you in and talk about some things and, and why you want to run for selectman. I appreciate you making the time. Uh, it's not, not a problem at all. Now, uh, before we get to why you want to be selectman, you kind of were drafted for this, right? I mean, you were drafted at the caucus. Am I correct about that? Uh, I went to the caucus and, and had someone nominate me. It, it wasn't really a draft, but uh, I, I knew that Jim Moore, who was running, wanted to resign, and he was hoping for someone that he could support to run in his place. Why did you want, or why do you want, this particular job? Uh, I guess I would say I want it because I really love the town of Conway. Um, and I finally have retired. And uh, in the last 10 years, I've been working a lot with an organization called Wired West. And the Wired West, Conway's involvement in Wired West is just about over. Uh, the, the state has separated the project between the non-cable towns and what are called partial cable towns. Conway's a partial cable town. Um, our project is different. We have funding from the state to, uh, to partially, and the, along with Comcast funding, to build out the broadband to just about every home in Conway. It's something we in Wired West are really proud of. And uh, with, with that being done, the partial cable towns will all probably resign from Wired West because we're not part of the Wired West network build. That's been quite a battle. I mean, just from, from the concept of it, and I'm amazed it's come as far as it has in just a few years. But there seems to be still some, I don't know if it's hesitance or what you would call it, on the state's part to come through with the final mile of money. What, what is that about? Well, it hasn't been a few years. So, <laughs> so uh, Wired West started about 2005. Okay. And uh, it took a long time. Uh, a group of us formed Wired West, and it was a long time to figure out how to build an organization. It's very, you know, it's, a, it's the only organization of its kind in the country. And uh, we fortunately came across some interesting old state laws to create uh, municipal light plants, right. to create a municipal light plant co-op. And, and then we had to help about 40 towns run through that process. And, and then eventually, five years ago or so, we actually created the co-op once once we knew what we were doing. That actually led to Conway joining up with FCAT too, right? Uh, well, n no. No, okay. <laughs> no. Um, Con Conway, like Deerfield, Waitley, and Sunderland, uh, has a, a franchise agreement with right. Comcast, and we've had that for many years. Um, and, and about five years ago, we completed our franchise agreement renegotiation, and that renegotiation included bringing peg money to Conway for the first time. Right. And so that allowed us to join, to join FCAT, uh, but it had nothing to do with Wired West. They were, although, um, you know, they're all related. Yeah, exactly. you know, they're all part of broadband and bringing high-speed internet, you know, to our towns. You got to feel pretty good, though, the idea of the entire town pretty much being covered. Because a lot of communities in the western part of Franklin County don't have that. That's right. Uh, there's still, you know, probably 30 or more towns um, west of here that have uh, dial-up and HughesNet uh, satellite, and, and that's all. Let's talk a little bit about the pipeline, which is the big sort of, still the big gorilla in the room, although, you know, Kinder Morgan says they're stopping work on it. I think that that's probably not completely true. But I know you've been vehemently against the idea of this pipeline. What about it bothers you or what doesn't bother you about it? I guess it's probably a shorter list. Uh, I would say what bothers me the most about it is the siting process having to do with FERC, which seems about as undemocratic as you can get. And basically, FERC has never found a pipeline they didn't like. Right. Um, and unfortunately, the, the first hurdle they, we have to go through has to do with our state DPU that's supposed to be protecting our rights that appears not to be doing that. So that has nothing to do with the pipeline in particular, but 
it did not seem like any of the concerns that the people of our, of our state had uh, were listened to at all. But I'm opposed to the pipeline because I don't think we need it. Uh, about two years ago, we had the polar vortex winter and we had one day where we had a natural gas shortage um, and it caused a serious problem. And uh, electric utilities had to turn on their old coal-fired and oil-fired plants to get through that shortage. And it was very expensive for them. And our state politicians said, we will never do that again. And fortunately, we've never had a winter like that again and we've never come close to running out of natural gas. And that's not like it's going to be that way forever, but, but we basically don't need this. There are a lot of alternatives to building this pipeline. Uh, we could put in some LNG storage tanks, we could repair the leaks in the current pipe, um, and we could increase our use of renewables uh, a lot. Of course, it, it's much easier for a company to scream moratorium, though, and, and uh, not have to give out any gas. And so that was a big that was a big step in in you know uh, getting people motivated to do yeah. something. When suddenly a lot of building projects got stopped because Berkshire Gas refused to uh, allow any new building projects, um, that that's a real hardship on for a lot of people. Conway is going to be asked at town meeting to spend some money to help Montague continue the legal battle. Is that money well spent? That money is largely goodwill money. So is goodwill money well spent? Um, Montague, because they're a customer of Berkshire Gas, are able to be um, an intervener in the process, and that means that they will be privy to all of the information that normally none of us get to look at. Mm -hmm. And so, and they're, gonna, they're taking on $150,000 worth of legal bills to do that, right. and many of us towns uh, want to support them yeah. and, you know, and will benefit greatly from this, this brave thing that they're doing. And so we're off. So, so the goal was to give them $5,000 to help pay their legal bills. We don't have an extra $5,000. And, and there may be other sources for that money. Right. Uh, one of the items that came up in our pre-town meeting was the, uh, that last year our town passed $20,000 to fund a pipeline committee in town to look at the pipeline and take a position on it, and they still have $14,000 left, and maybe the money w could come out of that if the town's that unwilling to pass it. Seem to make some sense. I mean, are, are, you, are you in favor, though, of, the, of that money being spent or not? I'm in favor of, of the gesture of offering yeah, $5,000 yeah. to yeah. Montague, yes. Does it, I mean, should people in Conway, should people in Western Mass be concerned that this thing is going to come back. I mean, it sounds like the Article 97 lawsuit's going to continue and the tariff issues are going to be continuing to be discussed. If Kinder Morgan gets what they want in those areas, conceivably this thing could come back and, and really, as, as one person on Deerfield Town Meeting floor called, they call it the, the Ned Zombie, the zombie that will never die. I mean, should people let their guard down at all? It, it, you know, all I can do is give you my opinion. I That's don't, what I'm I, I don't know the future. Um, my guess is that um, there was a hearing recently out in Pittsfield mm -hmm. that looked at the section of pipeline that's destined to go through the Otis State Forest. And that's going to go right through state protected land. And as such, it has to pass Article 97. And that's had its first hearing. I think tomorrow we're going to hear whether the outcome of that hearing. Uh, that's going to get appealed no matter what happens. Right. It's ultimately going to get appealed to the federal level. It's ultimately going to get appealed to the, to, to the United States Supreme Court, that's I what think, I'm too. because it is a really important question of whether a state can override our federal eminent domain laws. And, and uh, I, and so even, and that may take two years to do that. Sure. I expect if that goes in favor of striking down Article 97, we may see it come back. That, that would be my guess, and yes, I think in that case, they would come back and do it again. No doubt. Let's switch gears to a different topic. Uh, the town has been talking about the idea of putting together a community-wide septic system or doing some kind of alteration to the, or creating a sewage system. I think, though, the community-wide septic is the one being talked about most. What do you think about that, and is that a viable idea? 
I have to tell you, I'm not following it. I live far out of town. Um, I do know there are some interesting projects going on right in downtown Conway, looking at various alternative technologies for septic. Um, I, I don't look forward to the fight of how we're ever going to do it. I remember when Ashfield went through this fight, and it was long and very painful. I, I actually uh, covered Ashfield during the discussion of the solar aquatic system, which turned out to be yeah. not nearly as exciting of a prospect as everybody said it was going to be. But the, I, I think the biggest problem with a community-wide septic system is where do you put it? How, I mean, where do you put the leach field? How does that work? To cover an entire town, the geography, geographic size of Conway would be pretty tough, I would think. Well, in Esfield's case, and I imagine we would do the same thing, it would only cover downtown. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, most of us, I live outside town, all of us who live outside town, which are all of the folks that also don't have broadband, um, yes. those people would probably not be part of the town septic system either. Let's talk about senior housing. There's been some discussion about building some senior housing on some town-owned land. Uh, is that something Conway needs? Does Conway need more senior housing? There are many people in town who want senior housing. Uh, there are people who have a big old farmhouse that they no longer need, their ch kids are gone, and they would like to downsize, and they would like to stay in town. Um, uh, just like you mentioned for the septic system, where can we put senior housing? And there's been a committee in place, I think they've been looking at it for 11 years, <laughs> trying to find um, land that's suitable for building a dozen or some small number of, of, of uh, homes uh, and they so far haven't found a, a spot for it. Right, and I think that, in, it, it, again, it all comes back down to the location, and you've got a lot of hilly areas. I mean, you've got areas that just to, topographically wouldn't work for something like that. All the good land is either already built on or is in a flood zone, you know, or, you know, is unavailable. Or is an APR, is, is, yeah. Or, or an APR. Well, or APR is workable, but, yeah. um, the, the, you know, normally the goal is to put something like senior housing downtown where you can walk to the library, you can walk to the senior center, you can walk to our historical building, uh, you know, you could walk to our b baker's store and buy milk or get coffee in the morning and, and uh, not have to drive uh, every day all the time. That, the, that's tough. The, the struggle in every small community is how do you balance the desire to protect open space with the ability to grow your economy? And economy doesn't have a lot of business in town, but who knows? With, with a broadband build-out, you might be able to get some telecommunications people to come in here and work from their homes, which is what a lot of people talk about. But is there a way to build that tax base so it doesn't fall almost exclusively on the property owner? I really doubt it. It's a very residential community. We have orchard equipment, which is a wonderful industry. We're just blessed to have this, this, this local company right in town. Uh, we have a CSA in the middle of Conway, and actually for it to support the CSA, Conway did uh, purchase the development rights for about eight acres of land right in downtown Conway that allows David Fisher to grow his hay and, and feed his horses because he runs the CSA with horses. Mm -hmm. And all of that is what makes our town what it is. Right. Uh, other than that, we have very few, we don't have, we don't have local businesses. Do people, well, you talk to when you go out and campaign and, and talk to people around town, do they complain about property taxes? Or do they feel they're too high or are people pretty, pretty okay with the way things have been going. Everybody complains about that. <laughs> sure. And, and they've gone up and you know they, they, they Con Conway's taxes are relatively high. Yeah. Yeah. But you're also your property values are high too. That's part they of the are. reason exactly. And one of the reasons our property values are high is Conway has uh, arguably the best elementary school in yes. Western Mass. And so uh, when our population started to fall Conway opened up its school for school choice. We've quickly filled the school with, full, with school choice kids and they've all moved to Conway. And so now we have no room for school choice. We have a lot of wonderful young families in town, um, but it means our, our town is, is a popular place to build a house and raise a family. And you wanna bring in younger people as much as possible. I mean, a lot of, a lot of communities like Conway are getting very old, they're aging out and, and people are leaving and, and not a lot of people, young people are coming in, so you've got that going for you. And I know you, speaking of the elementary, or the grammar school, I should say, you've been over there quite a bit. You've done some work over there, and you work with them on technology and stuff. I mean, talk about that school, and, and are there ways to improve it, or, is, or do you think it's going pretty well right now? Uh, 
the school is going great. Um, one of the, you know, I, I was involved in the school when my kids were there. Mm. We built the school around 1991, right. and uh, my kids were, were weren't in the school quite then. And uh, I was involved with bringing computers into the school, and we built a little computer lab, and and uh, we had, you know, had to talk to the, help the teachers figure out what they wanted to do with computers. And actually, when we had that computer lab, we used to run little night classes for people in town that wanted to know what these computer things were all about. And we taught people what's, what's Microsoft Word, what's PowerPoint, uh, you, know, wh you know, how do you do a presentation, uh, you know, what's a spreadsheet. So they were all, in, back in 19, the early 90s, those were brand new ideas. Right. And, and uh, now we don't do things, people have computers at home now. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk a little bit about capital spending. Uh, there's going to be a new fire truck on the town meeting agenda. I know that in your campaign statement, you said that replacing that is very, very important. Uh, I assume you feel that way. But in terms of capital spending, is the town doing enough to replace these items in a timely fashion? Or can the town do more to spend more money on, on capital projects? Or does it spend too much? I guess what's your thought on that? Uh, we have a committee that's putting together a long-term capital spending plan. They're not quite done yet, uh, but you know, it's the kind of planning that you need to do so we know what we're going to have to replace you know, over the next 20 years. Our fire truck is 26 or 7 years yeah. old. Uh, the pumps are failing. There's parts of the truck that don't work at all. Uh, we need to buy a new pumper. Uh, this, this pumper is quite a bit better than our last pumper and that has some people upset that we're it's going to cost 400 and what is it thirty seven thousand dollars and part of the cost for that is that um, last year we failed to find the money to build a new town garage and uh, our garage is so short we can't fit a standard size pumper in it and so we have to buy a custom-made pumper truck that'll fit in our short garage. That was quite a fight. Uh, it was a really divisive fight. And, and, and there's still divisions, I think, over whether to build that garage. Is that something, if you're a selectman, you're going to try and get the town to revisit? Yes. It's something that I'm going to see if they, we can revisit. Um, it was so painful, the selectmen haven't wanted to touch it. Really? But we desperately needed a new town garage. When I moved to Conway in 1980... I was interested in finding the town garage, and I found a set of buildings that said town garage, and I thought, well, they must be the old town garage. <laughs> I wonder where the real current town garage is, and that's still our town garage. And, and they, you know, we've moved a lot of the vehicles out of there and built a big garage to hold, hold road vehicles uh, behind the grammar school. But well, the ambulance and our, and our, and our uh, fire vehicles are all still in a very, Cramped, tiny building. Do you think that there's more support this time around to go after a new garage plan? I think so. I think a lot of people regretted their vote. They voted no because they thought they, I don't know, instinctively voted no. And then there was anger that, that the select board brought exactly the same proposal back when people had spoken against it or people had ideas people felt like they weren't listened to and so when the same proposal came back up in a special town meeting it lost there has to be a two-thirds vote yep. it only lost by a few votes right do you think that the current board that's you'll be serving with bob baker and john o'rourke would they be open do you think have you talked to either one of them about the idea of resurrecting this argument I've talked to them, and, <laughs> and, and, and it may take another year, it may take a little while until the pain goes away. Really? It's, that, it's, still, uh, and, that, it's and, still that raw. And, you know, Rick Bean was a real driving force right. behind that garage, and, uh, and that was a, sort of a, a tragic story, and, yeah. and, and, and it, all of that is going to have to settle out. One of the things the town has been battling with lately is getting people to volunteer to sit on these town boards. And so, you know, it's a lot of town boards that need representation. As selectmen, what are you going to do to try and get more people involved? Yeah, I'm here. I'm running for selectman. I'm the chairman of our broadband committee. Uh, I'm a representative to Wired West. You know, they're all kind of related, uh, those are, but uh, it's hard to find, and I had a hard time finding people to serve on the broadband committee. Uh, a lot of the people who did not have broadband were motivated to join the committee. Right. But, but other than people having a real personal interest, it is hard. 
It is hard. And it's hard to get people to be, I know on this organization, to be on the board of this organization, and I'm glad you're still around. And it's going to be weird, too, because you and John are both technically on this board. And John, although he hasn't been at many meetings, are we going to have to do a double posting now when, when we have you come in? Because technically, it'll be a select board majority if you both show up at the board. Well, you know? Maybe one of us will have to drop <laughs> No, don't you go anywhere. <laughs> uh, let's talk about recreation options, because it was a fairly, a fairly interesting debate at a special town meeting last year that I was at about whether to buy dugouts for a ball field. And, and there's been talk about a new hiking trail being blazed. Um, does Conway need more recreational options for people, you think? Conway has a large ball field that really needed a lot of work. And we raised, uh, you know, we raised through grants a lot of the money. It wasn't a lot of town money that right. actually funded that. But there were a lot of people that watched this gigantic project go on forever in the center of town and felt like the town of Conway was not being responsible. But actually, their taxes paid for very, very little of it. Uh, we now have the ball field running. Uh, we run one very large festival, our, you know, our Festival of the Hills in the fall. Um, we do have a piece of land down in the center of town, right down near the river, that we have a lot of talk over what to do with that piece of land. But other than that, we don't have a lot of space you know, to, build, to build any new recreational facilities. We, we could really use a good soccer field. Yeah, There's been I a think. lot of talk about putting a soccer field in one of those places, but we play soccer on top of the baseball field. And it works okay. <laughs> it works okay, and <laughs> people seem to like that area. It's a beautiful, uh, section of town where the where the grammar school until was. last year that was it was very wet all the time it yeah. was very poorly drained and so that's hopefully been solved what about the future long-term spending i mentioned earlier but um, police and fire uh the ambulance service is there a possibility that conway might look at joining skims and along with deerfield whitley and uh sunderland conway is really proud of the fact that we have our own ambulance and we have a, a, an excellent volunteer fire department and the fire department now still is, I think we have 24 volunteer firemen and, and a good number of young kids in our young kids program. Those kids grow up and become firemen. Uh, the, the ambulance right now is low on volunteers and we need to, we need to get more, more volunteers. So but, that's one of but those But no, I don't here. think we're gonna, we're gonna join with Deerfield and SCAM. Well, I mean, you know that, that that's been a real hot button, you know, the, 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 especially with Deerfield, but I mean, I, I know that I've, I've talked to people involved with skims, and one of the things, you know, they're looking forward, they're thinking maybe Hatfield joins, maybe Hadley joins, maybe Conway joins at some point, but you're saying probably not because people like the service that you have. Right, right now we have, uh, you know, an excellent four-wheel drive ambulance that can get up into everyone's house. Uh, you know, you call Bay State, their ambulance shows up. The, the, the EMTs transfer from one ambulance to another, and they roar off to the hospital, and it's working really well. Uh, and you know we have, you know, response times in minutes to get the ambulance right. to somebody's house, and it's really important. Bridges. There's a few bridges in Conway, and bridges all over the state. Roads and bridges, and, and the inability to fix them is a big problem. But you know, Conway has got a couple of bridges that need to be fixed and, and replaced altogether. And I know that, you know, Boston doesn't always care that much about rural towns when it comes to that kind of spending. As selectman, is that something you'll try to push for on Beacon Hill and get more? Attention out here for our bridges. Uh, this is something I'm going to have to learn more about as a selectman. You know, I did watch uh, the bridge up in Northern Conway get rebuilt near my house. Um, it, 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 that was in conjunction with doing a lot of road work on the Shelburne Falls to Conway Road, uh, and uh, that bridge. They stopped work on that bridge, and I'm nervous that I don't think they ever actually finished. You know, painting the underside of the bridge, or um, and you know, it looked like a state project that way. Um, but the bridge that we have a lot of trouble with is the bridge right in downtown Conway, yeah. where whenever there's a large flood, the water rushes through there and washes away the riprap on the walls on either side of it, and it's washing away the, uh, the, the, the banks of the houses that are just past that bridge. And those problems, by the way, <clears throat> the large-scale weather events are going to get probably worse, not better. I mean, climate is changing. We all know this. And this is a thing that a lot of small communities are going to have to deal with. Is there any kind of a plan or should there be a plan in place, a capital budget or, or somewhere, a, a pot of money to deal with disasters as they happen? I don't know about that. I don't know. You know, right now we talk to the state, we get state money. Um, 
I don't think there's a lot that we, I mean, most of these projects are state projects, not right. town projects. They're not projects we should be paying for. Uh, but, but when you talk about climate change, you know, I do think that issues dealing with climate change are just going to dominate our town politics, you know, for the future. And they should. Uh, I mean, it's that, important. Yeah. And uh, when, when Conway is looking at building a large solar farm, I, you know, I'm all for it. Um, Are you doing a solar project of your own? I right? have a, I have a tracker at my house. There's a lot of trackers in Conway to some extent because there's a, a, a fellow in town who sells, who, who, who sells trackers and people trust them. And, and it's nice to be able to do a solar project with one of your neighbors. We have a couple solar companies represented in town and we have a lot of people in town who have sort of become personal experts in solar. And so if you want to know something and you don't want to talk to a salesman, there's a lot of people to talk to. Right, we only have a couple of minutes left. I'm going to give you a chance for a final statement and a chance to make a final pitch to the voters of Conway why they should elect Bob Armstrong selectman on May 12th. Well, I could, I could tell you, you know, I'm looking for a project to work on now that I am no longer involved or I won't be involved in Wired West. And um, there's a lot of work on the select board. Um, there's things I'm, ner I'm nervous about keeping the quality of our school up. We have a new principal. I'm nervous about, you know, how we're going to, how we're going to build a solar farm that's going to attract a lot of people in Conway to be able to buy into it. So there's a lot of projects in town and I'm looking forward to them. Election Day in Conway is May 12th. Polls open from 11 to 7 that day. Make sure you get out and vote. My guest has been Bob Armstrong, candidate for Conway Select Board. I'm Chris Collins. That's South County Spotlight. For all of us here at FCAT, have a good day.